I am uh, chair of the Safe Cholecystectomy Task Force. This is something that I've been passionate about. My other disclosures don't relate at all to the content of this talk. And so let me just provide a little bit of framework of where we are today and then uh, a quick update on what we're doing on Safe Cole. So there are about a million cholecystectomies that are done in the U.S. every year, and complications occur in anywhere of 6 to 7 percent of patients. Of course, bile duct injury is the most feared complication, and that can lead to numerous interventions and hospitalizations, higher mortality than expected uh, for uh, age-adjusted individuals, and significant economic uh, cost to our healthcare system. And so, in 2014, we started the SAGE's Safe Cholecystectomy Task Force, and really, the goal of this task force is to enhance a universal culture of safety for cholecystectomy to minimize the risk of bile duct injury and other complications from this common procedure. We went through a fairly rigorous process at the outset where we surveyed SAGE's uh, uh, leaders and committee members on what they thought were critical factors for safe surgical practice in cholecystectomy, and a number of key domains were identified. And it was really the output from this work that led to our uh, initial uh, uh, presentation of what we call the six-step program. These are things that, sages can do, that surgeons can do now to minimize the risk of a biliary injury during cholecystectomy. And I'm just going to very briefly uh, go through these. So number one is understand and apply the critical view of safety. This was described back in 1995. Um, and I think still there is oftentimes uh, a misunderstanding of exactly what the critical view is. But it's three elements. Uh, two and only two structures entering the gallbladder. The hepatocystic triangle is cleared of all fat and fibrous tissue. And the lower third of the gallbladder should be dissected off to expose that portion of the cystic plate. So how are we doing? This is a, uh, this is a study that looked at uh, assessment of the critical view safety that was carried out by Adnan Elsady's group at Virginia Mason here in Seattle. They took surgical videos that were published online, and they rated them on a scale of one to six on achievement of the critical view, six being a perfect, uh, a perfect uh, presentation of the critical view. And the average score was only 3.6. And there was a high correlation between crowd workers and faculty experts, but only 12.5% of the videos rated had a CVS score of five or greater. So really, a lot of room for improvement. Step two in the program is understand aberrant anatomy, which of course is common uh, in uh, uh, the gallbladder, around the gallbladder. These include short cystic duct, aberrant hepatic ducts, right hepatic artery, crosses anterior to the bile duct, uh, and a number of other things that you should familiarize yourself with. Step three is make liberal use of cholangiography or other means of, of intraoperative biliary imaging. Uh, and cholangiography may be especially important in cases of, uh, uh, that are difficult or in which there's unclear anatomy. And there are several studies that have shown that routine cholangiography reduces the incidence of biliary injury, but controversy on this issue uh, remains. There's a lot of interest in uh, infrared techniques for biliary imaging. Um, that's not a, a topic that we're really going to dive into today, but certainly we could uh, discuss that in the, uh, later in the session. And step four is a bit of a new concept, and that's to perform an intraoperative timeout. We do timeouts in the OR all the time now before we start our cases, but this is just meant to be a stop point or a check after you've done your dissection, but before you clip or cut to take a step back and look and say, am I really looking at what I think I'm looking? And, and this is something that the entire team can potentially participate in. Step five is a difficult cholecystectomy, and really what that entails is recognizing when the dissection is entering a zone of danger and halt the dissection before entering that zone. And we'll have some, uh, uh, a little discussion about that further in the uh, session. And, and then to finish the operation by a safe method other than total cholecystectomy if conditions around the gallbladder are too dangerous. And then finally, step, step six is get help for difficult cases. If uh, you're kind of not making progress in the operation, if you can't get to the critical view, if there's some unclear things about the anatomy or just any other conditions that you feel are difficult, I think it's always it's an important principle and something maybe that we don't do enough in our surgical culture is to call uh, for help and to get a second set of eyes to look at things and give you a hand. So uh, the Safe Coley Group has been very active. Uh, we've developed a series of web-based education modules that will be freely available to the public. Uh, these are going to be uh, online, uh, uh, similar to FES and the FUSE curriculums. They'll be on the SAGES website 
sometime later this spring, and I would encourage you to take a look at these. Uh, give us any feedback about them and uh, to encourage your, your trainees and your fellow colleagues uh, to take a, a look at the SAFE uh, Coley modules. And then finally, a, a major initiative is that we have uh, formed a multi-society uh, group, uh, SAGES, SSAT, the AHPBA, the International HPB Association, and European Association of Endoscopic Surgeons, and we're having a, a consensus development co conference on prevention of bile duct injury that will be held on the Saturday at the front end of the American College of Surgeons meeting in Boston uh, next this coming fall. And I would uh, encourage, uh, this will be open to the public, and I would encourage you to make your plans to come a day early to the college uh, and uh, join us uh, for this uh, meeting.